So recently there have been a report of cases, namely pneumonia and respiratory infection in Wuhan in China starting December of 2019. These have now been known to be caused by the novel coronavirus COVID-19, after which thousands of cases have been reported, uh, not just in China, but all over the world. Hi, my name is Adi Shah. I am a Chief Infectious Disease Fellow at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and also Assistant Professor of Medicine at the Mayo Clinic here. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak with you about the article which is going to come out in the April 2020 version of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Um, and it's titled A Guide to Understand the Novel Coronavirus COVID-19 Outbreak that is going on right now. Uh, coronavirus types um, are widely circulating in both mammals and birds. Two types of coronavirus, alpha and beta. Coronavirus can also cause infection in human beings, out of which the beta coronavirus has three most important strains, namely the uh, acute respiratory, um, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus, or, or called the SARS coronavirus or the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus or, or the MERS coronavirus and the recently isolated uh, novel coronavirus variant called COVID-19. As I said, we've, we are seeing thousands of cases all over the world. Currently, the CDC recommends testing for patients um, and the exact recommendations are still in a flux because the situation is still evolving. However, it leaves it up to clinician discretion to test patients with cough or shortness of breath or respiratory issues who have either been in contact with patients with COVID-19 or who are healthcare workers who've been in contact with patients with COVID-19 or people who have traveled to countries or in the world where the COVID-19 outbreak is ongoing or people who have been in contact with those people who have been in contact with uh, patients who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Now these recommendations are in a flux because in the US we are now going to see much wide press testing after the CDC expanded its testing criteria. So these situations are very evolving as we speak. It's very important for the public to know that the CDC currently recommends that if you are a generally healthy person in public, it is not recommended that you wear a mask for your protection if you're healthy. However, the CDC does strongly recommend measures such as hand hygiene, washing your hands for at least 20 seconds, uh, disinfection of areas that you might be using on a daily basis, avoiding people who are sick so that you don't get sick yourself. And if you are sick, then they do recommend that you wear a surgical mask so that the other people who you get in touch with can be prevented from getting uh, the infection that you might be having. Even for healthcare workers, the situation is in a flux right now. In abundance of caution, the isolation precautions that have been recommended are contact precautions, namely wearing gloves and gown airborne and modified droplet precautions. Now these include um, wearing an N95 mask or a PEPR, a purified air purifier uh, mask if you're doing aerosol generating procedures. Again, these situations are also in a flux, but in abundance of caution, these are the recommendations that the CDC and the WHO have for healthcare workers. They also have very strict and stringent recommendations on their website of how to dispose of materials that might have been used by patients that are suspected to have COVID-19. So it's important that healthcare workers or even general public refer to these guides if, they're, if they have questions so that they can have their questions answered uh, without panicking about it. Um, lastly, we live in a time where information is easily and exchanged very fast amongst various people all over the world by social media. There are fears that this might indeed end up becoming a global pandemic. Um, regardless of that, the out outbreak right now is rather challenging with the various aspects of infection control and prevention of the infection. So at times like these, it is imperative that we do not spread panic. It's imperative that we maintain calm 
and it's also most imperative that we rely on public health organizations like the CDC and the WHO to have information um, or to, to have information on how to deal with any questions that you might have. So in this paper, essentially, we try to summarize all that I have mentioned in sort of what we know, what we don't know, what the challenges are, and what the advances are that we are making um, in our own practice to um, help patients that, who might have such infection ongoing. And we try to separate the fact from the fiction in this paper and take a step back and see the whole thing in a third-person perspective so that it can serve as a guide for clinicians who have questions about managing such patients. Um, again, thank you for reading this paper. If you have any questions, my email address and my Twitter handle would be on the paper. So would be some of my co-authors and their contact information. Feel free to reach out to us or the Mayo Clinic Proceedings if you have any questions or if you have any um, issues regarding the paper that we have just published. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.